Hello everyone. So uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at geometric distortions in recorded images. So now uh, we uh, we now come to a rather more important matter of geometric distortions in the remote sensing imagery. This is important because the images from the aircraft and the drones are often not corrected for these errors. So uh, you need to know how to uh, do that that uh, by yourself if the geometric integrity is important. As we mention, mentioned earlier, the techniques uh, used for uh, correcting errors in geometry are the same methods uh, we use for making sure an image is registered to a non-map basis. There are many uh, sources of geometric uh, errors, including the fact that uh, the earth and the platform are in uh, motion during an image acquisition. The fact that the platform can vary in altitude, attitude and velocity. The fact that the earth is uh, curved when uh, seen from the space and uh, the fact that the instrument themselves introduce uh, a geometric variation by virtue of their design. We make the assumption that all recorded bands are affected equally. Therefore, uh, we apply our techniques to uh, each band in an image separately, but uh, only have to develop our correction methods on a single band. To help understand the nature of geometric distortion in remote sensing imagery, it is uh, useful to see how the image is formed from uh, a sequential uh, lines of image data. It helps for uh, much of the waters to uh, follow. If we uh, look carefully at how an image is built up from recorded pixels, so the diagram uh, here uh, shows shows us a group of pixel or uh, grid centers. You can able to see here. So these are the pixels or uh, uh, grid centers. The grid centers are spaced apart by IFOV that is instantaneous uh, field of view of the sensors and uh, in this case we have shown an array of uh, L lines of uh, M pixels each. You can able to see here these are the array of uh, L lines. So uh, what is a pixel? It is a sample of uh, the earth surface equal in size to the IFOV that is instantaneous field of view of the sensor. A set of pixels is therefore just a, a set of those samples. The rate of sampling is arranged ideally so that when we form an image by laying down a, a record of uh, pixels on the grid, the pixels uh, join up with each other as uh, depicted here. We uh, need to keep this model in, in mind uh, in everything uh, we do now with respect to the image geometry. So uh, from this uh, image you can able to see these are the pixels laid on the grid. And these are the pixel centers. Uh, you can able to see that this is a pixel center, and this is the instantaneous field of view. And uh, these are the uh, sensor record of L lines of uh, M pixels. Normally, we form an image by laying the lines down successfully one under another, that uh, effectively creates a square grid with uh, a center spacing equal to the instantaneous uh, field of view of the sensor and with uh, a pixel located with their uh, center on the grid intersection. So this is our uh, pixel center. These are the intersection. The first time uh, this rectangular grid concept becomes uh, useful uh, is in understanding the errors introduced uh, into an image as a result of the rotation of the earth. The signal uh, coming from the remote sensing platform is, is uh, just a string of pixels for uh, each recorded lines of data. Knowing uh, nothing better, we just lay them uh, down on a regular uh, image grid as uh, discussed in a previous slide. That gives the screen looking an image on the left hand side of this uh, slide here. However, during a satellite image acquisition, the earth is uh, moving to uh, east underneath the platform. In this case, uh, the image in the platform is moving down the slide. So this particular image here. A part of the image that is uh, recorded uh, last was uh, actually to the west uh, when the recording of this image segments uh, started and has moved itself directly under the platform by the time the last line of the pixel is recorded. Therefore, to make the image geometry uh, reflect uh, that of uh, the actual portion of the earth surface being imaged, the second and the last lines of uh, the pixels uh, need to be shifted progressively to the west. So as uh, shown in the right-handed image here, you can able to see this particular image. If we uh, know the velocity of the spacecraft, the earth velocity of that location 
and the size of the image it is uh, relatively easy to work out how much of uh, each line of pixels needs to be shifted by so uh, you can able to visualize from the left hand side of this image here that is geometrically in error when the pixel lay down down on the regular grids as uh, in the previous slide we have shown it and compared to that uh, with this uh, the right hand side image here it is uh, compensated for the earth's rotation that is opposite to the earth movement and this is how the distortion uh, in this image gets corrected uh, in this uh, way and this is the the effect of the earth rotation uh, during an imaging we now uh, consider uh, a very unusual form of uh, geometric uh, distortion it occurs when the scan of the sensor is very wide in other words uh, it has a, a large uh, field of view or a field of view so the diagram uh, on the left hand side here you can able to see shows uh, the relevant geometry notice that the area of the earth imaged at at uh, the swath uh, extremity is uh, much larger than that uh, at the nadir that is uh, directly under the sensor yet uh, it even through it corresponds to the large uh, larger region on the ground the actual uh, pixel is displayed as the same size as the pixel at nadir when we uh, when uh, used to construct an image so you can able to see from this particular image here the area of the earth imaged uh, per pixel at the scan extremity so in this uh, in this view uh, this is the size of the pixel and uh, and this is the size of the pixel at nadir so uh, you can able to see the satellite or aircraft so the below point here so uh, at the nadir the area of the earth imaged uh, per pixel at nadir this is the size of the pixel uh, compared to the in this view and uh, compared with that of uh, this particular view here and the distance between the platform uh, that is uh, aircraft and the ground is called as the platform altitude and this and this particular uh, area is called as a instantaneous field of view so now on the right, right hand side you can able to see the images here so when those recorded pixels are placed on a regular display grid the pixel towards the swath edges even through the displayed in uh, the same size as those towards the center of the scan covers a much larger ground region and uh, thus appear compressed uh, by comparison to those at the swath center to illustrate uh, what it does to an image consider the ground scene on the uh, right hand side of the right hand side image here this is the ground scene and uh, be careful here so the regular grid uh, shown uh, might represent a set of uh, big query size uh, square field it is uh, not the display grid the image uh, in the ratio of those field consists of many pixels the two uh, broader diagonal lines uh, might represent uh, the road that uh, that uh, cut across the field uh, at 45 degree as shown here when the recorded pixels are laid down on a regular uh, display grid the effect is to uh, compress the edges of uh, the images as shown on the very right hand side of the image here so you can able to see this image here you can able to see the compression here and also in this corner here so in the center there is a there is no compression as we move towards the end of this image here the uh, the uh, pixels gets compressed here you can able to see that here in this image that is uh, because the pixels at the edges represent a greater uh, geographical region than those at the center and yet are displayed as the same size the visual effect is to give uh, the impression that the image uh, rolls off at the edges the diagonal road uh, takes on the s shape as shown the, in this image here so that uh, sometimes this uh, panoramic distortion is called uh, s bend uh, distortion so this particular distortion is called s bend distortion from the satellite altitude uh, the sensors with uh, a wide field of uh, field of view are sensitive to the earth's curvature as seen in this slide here uh, you can able to see here without uh, going into uh, too much details the net effect on the image is to exaggerate the panoramic distortion uh, of the previous slide so the effect of earth curvature is uh, only problem for for a wide uh, instantaneous uh, that is field of view space borne sensors so you can able to free from this uh, same uh, image here these are different uh, satellite the platform altitude the earth surface and the flat earth area imaged at the swath edge so this is the actual area imaged at the swath edge 
So the effect of earth curvature is to exaggerate the panoramic distortion uh, we examined in our previous slide where the earth curvature was not a problem. So now uh, let's look at some of the errors, uh, the instrumentation effects, the errors caused by the instrument themselves. So for an oscillating mirror scanner as we seen here, as seen here, so this is an oscillating scanning mirror here. The mirror has to uh, slow down, stop and uh, the reverse directions at the end of each scan. By definition, the scan has to be non-linear at the swath edges. To minimize the non-linearity, a scanning window is defined over which the data is recorded and uh, beyond which any other uh, detected radiation is ignored. Clearly, the scanning window is chosen to exclude the extreme non-linearity at the scan edges. So you can able to uh, view from this particular diagram, uh, the graph here the mirror viewing position across swath uh, across the swath so scan is a non linear uh, non linear near the swath edges because the oscillating mirror has to stop and uh, reverse direction and the swath edge is uh, is you can able to see from this image here this is the swath edge so this is the actual area of the image at the uh, swath edge so the sensor scanning uh, non linear non linearity uh, caused by with an oscillating scanning mirror we now uh, look at uh, two other instrumentation problems. The first is related to the fact that some uh, scanners take a finite time to uh, cross the swath while a platform is moving forward during a data acquisition. That means the, that the portion of the earth is being scanned is further forwards uh, on the swath edge at the end of the scan. To correct for this effect, the displayed uh, pixels had to be shifted progressively backwards uh, towards the the edge of the image the second error is called uh, the aspect uh, ratio distortion it is uh, caused by the pixel sampling rate across the scan line not being uh, not being uh, synchronous uh, with respect to the ifov that is instantaneous field of view of this instrument if the sampling uh, rate is too fast the pixel uh, pixels overlap if uh, it is too slow the pixels have a space between them again uh, when this pixels sequence are displayed on a uh, on a regular grid the effect is to expand or uh, compress the image across the track so we can able to view from this image here this is oversampling uh, uh, along a line uh, scan line of ifov overlaps that is instantaneous field of views overlap and this is the undersampling along the scan line uh, the gap occurs this causes either an uh, expansion or compression of an image uh, in the cross track direction. So the key point that is covered in this video demonstrate the expansion of the image across the trend uh, caused by oversampling uh, with respect to the IFOV of the instrument. This is a particular uh, problem with the Landsat multispectral scanner. So in this video have uh, we have discussed a geometric distortion in the recorded image. So thanks for watching and uh, please subscribe to our channel and give us a like.